So I was thinking recently about code catters, because people seem to like code catters as a way of practicing their programming. Um, I don't tend to do code catters, but when I was looking through the kind of applications and code that I write in order to practice, and when I'm learning a new programming language, what I end up doing is either um, writing a text adventure game, because I, I like that, that teaches me parsing, string parsing, file handling, and depending on how far I go, various memory um, objects and constructs. Or I'll write a link checker, um, because that's a very useful thing to have in your toolbox and implement that in a, uh, any programming language teaches me HTTP for that language, which is always useful. Because remember, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to learn a language in order to support me with my testing. So I'm typically finding use cases and applications and functionality that I can use. And I've probably written counter strings more than any other. Right, so you can find blog posts on counter strings. I've got a blog post on counter strings on my site. Counter strings were created by James Bach, and he's written a tool to do that. And it's basically self-describing test data that when you paste it into a field, if the field is too small or truncates your data, you can easily see what it is. Now, the first version of this I ever wrote, I wrote in Excel because we were in an environment that had locked down access to what we could install. And we were not allowed to install any programming languages or anything to help us do uh, build our own tools. But they gave us Office, an Office and Office has a full programming language built in. So by using Visual Basic for Applications, I was able to write counter strings and test data and various other tools because we don't let anything stop us. But I noticed that counter strings was one of the first things that I built for that. In my test tool hub, which you can find on GitHub, I've got a Java implementation of counter strings. Now this does a predictive version of counter strings. So it can actually stream it to a file. It can actually type it into a field for you. That was a useful exercise in extending what the counter strings can do and forcing me to learn extra parts for Java that I didn't know. I have a predictive version of counter strings in JavaScript, which is also part of the testing app. And that was useful when I was learning JavaScript because I was able to convert the Java code almost directly into JavaScript to see how it works through a known domain, which is the counter strings. Because programming languages are very, very similar. So very often what we're doing when we learn a programming language is simply learning the differences between other languages. And if we keep the domain the same, then all we're doing is learning syntax and we end up with a useful tool that we can use in that programming language. And recently I did a reverse algorithm counter string in JavaScript to use as an extension. So I use counter strings as one of the main uh, catas or applications that I end up doing, the same domain that I end up coding all the time. Sometimes it'll be test driven, sometimes it won't. But when you're learning uh, programming and when you're applying it for testing, one of the best things to do is find something that will actually be useful to you. And counter strings are enormously useful and the code can be very, very simple. One is the, so as katas, what I'm recommending is try counter strings and try the different algorithms for doing it. Because you can create a naive forward counter string that starts at the front and counts up and it will generate 15 characters, but it won't necessarily be easy to see where it's truncated. And um, you can create uh, reverse counter strings, which is the algorithm that most people use, which is build it up um, from the end backwards, then just reverse the string so that when you're pasting it in, that's how Perl clip works. And I've explained all these algorithms in here. Um, and I've got a blog post that you can read that explains how to use counter strings as a cata with different embellishments. But were you doing it less as a kata and more as an example that will help you learn programming because it's a very simple example to do and you can embellish it in different ways depending on how far you want to push your learning experience and what you want to learn in that particular language. Other ideas you might choose to practice with are Link checkers, that's always a really good one because it teaches you HTTP, head requests, get requests, pulling things out. You can do simple validation on the page. And my favorite is 
right in the verb noun text adventure.